Okay, can uh, we call the meeting to order and let's stand and recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I'm going to turn my phone to silent here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Make sure we're all in here. Okay. I'm in. I feel like, I'm in. what's that game show where they would push the cards in and your name would light up? The match game? <laughs> That's Buddy what we in. <laughs> you know, and, the, and these microphones always remind me of the match game. You joined, you're all set? I, I was. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm off now. Even when they brought it back, they went and found the same microphone. There you go, get joined. Using it. <laughs> You're all set. Are you joined? Did you get joined? Go back to the Go back. We need, we need to like join. So join between you. Okay. Are you all set? Yeah. Did you get joined? Okay. I'm in. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Everything okay? All right. Good. Do you know why the display okay. is such? You know what it is? It's for some reason it's small. Uh-oh. <laughs> I can see it off to the side. <laughs> and it's from some other city. Why are you not? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we are we being uh Yeah. Uh, we've been annexed. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Good. Good. That could be a blessing. We're no longer a homeowners association. Okay, well, the issues about holding things up. Yeah. The, the part that I apologize for, the part of the issues we're still working towards getting the monitor all wireless set up, and it was completely eliminating any of these issues. With our new IT person, who's been awesome, we were working on that. I don't know if we had it before the last meeting this uh, summer, but we're hoping to do that. So I do apologize. I'm not sure why I was working earlier. Yeah, I think there's something wrong with that. We'll, we'll, we'll just plug along here then. Can we do the roll call? Okay, let's have the roll call. Councilmember Ann Standig? Here. Councilmember Turner? Here. Councilmember Rogers? Here. Councilmember Wilsheimer? Here. And Mayor Craig? Here. Okay, and our next item is presentations. Okay. Who's who's giving the presentation? This is the introduction of the police chief. All right. Who's going to present him? Good evening. Thank you for having me. My name is uh, Pete DeSena. I am the new uh, chief of police for the Mo uh, Los Gatos Montesino uh, Police Department, and I'm very happy to be here. So uh, I was. Uh, the city manager made time for me just to come and say hello, introduce myself to you. Um, I don't know if you've uh, heard much about me, but uh, this is my third week, so I'm happy that I still have a job. So apparently I'm not doing <laughs> too badly so far, but it's been great. I spent the last eight years as chief of police at San Jose State University, uh, and then prior to that, about 28 years with the city of San Jose. So uh, it's it's a wonderful to be here. It's a fabulous community. I was telling uh, Council Member uh, and Stan Degg and um, Wolf Schreimer that I was at the uh, El Rancho uh, Neighborhood Watch meeting last night, and incredible that uh, I think there are 17 households in this particular area, and I, I think 16 were represented at the meeting. And I've been to a lot of uh, Neighborhood Watch meetings in my career, and I said the percentage of people there that were involved is great, so I think that w makes for a great community. But uh, happy to be here. It's a great police department. Um, you folks are, are, are very fortunate, and I want to thank uh, Captain D'Antonio, who's been the, uh, the stu a good steward for the department over the last year, and we actually have some great news. I don't want to take up too much time, but I don't know if you heard there was a burglary earlier, burglary earlier today on uh, Cabin Avenue, uh, about 11 o'clock today, an actual burg burglary, and um, I'll let Captain D'Antonio explain the circumstances, but it really points to the great work that the officers do. Um, and uh, there was actually arrests. And I think they've identified the uh, suspects and arrested, I think, at least three of them. So, Mike, you uh, want to come up and tell them about what absolutely. happened? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Mayor yeah. Council, thank you um, very much. Before I tell the story, I just, I, I just want to um, 
tell you how thrilled I am to have the new chief of police. Um, Pete and I had an opportunity to get to know each other over the last year at our county chiefs meetings. Um, and as great of an organization as we have, we just got better. And, and I mean that sincerely. Um, we think we're going to have a great team moving forward. And uh, stories like today just are indicative of, of the great work that we get to do. We don't always get to tell these types of stories. And it's actually unusual to have a burglary solved this quickly um, unless, it, unless it was interrupted and we had officers on scene and taking people into custody. So on this one, uh, like Chief said, about 11 p.m. or 11 a.m. this morning, we had a, a call of a residential burglary. Uh, officers responded in, in conjunction with detectives. Uh, we actually were fortunate enough to be able to view some of the video. And this is where the deep knowledge of, of the community and what goes on in collaboration with other agencies comes into play because uh, one of our detectives looked at the video and recognized one of the suspects. And the reason why he recognized the suspect is that uh, about a year and a half ago, that same, you know, it's a juvenile suspect, um, was responsible for a strong arm robbery in the parking lot of Lenardi's where a woman was um, injured, uh, purse taken. We reached out to our partners on that case and, and included the Regional Auto Theft Task Force who ultimately uh, was able to make a car stop, um, recovered that victim's property, and we were able to, to solve that case. Uh, and so the, the suspect in that case was seen on the video by one of, our, one of our detectives. So he called, again, our partners at the Regional Auto Theft Task Force and said, hey, I've just, we've just had a residential burglary. The suspect that you helped us arrest a year and a half ago is involved. We have two additional suspects that we have video of. Um, can you help us ID the other two suspects? The task force said, absolutely. In fact, we're going to go out to the address of record in San Jose to see if we can, we can spot your suspect. Uh, the task force went out there. They saw the vehicle. They did a surveillance. And as that surveillance was being conducted, the suspects appeared to be um, in the process of doing another residential burglary in San Jose. Uh, foot a foot pursuit ensued. We were able to get two suspects in custody. Our detectives uh, immediately went en route, uh, interviewed the two suspects. The third uh, suspect has, has been identified, although still outstanding, and we were able, fortunate enough, to recover um, jewelry from our residential burglary in Montesferino. I don't know how much that we have at this time. There's a large amount of cash. They're actually working the case as we speak. So. I'm just proud of the work that they do, and again, just to talk about the collaboration um, that we have both with Montesarino, Los Gatos, and even other agencies throughout the, the county that, that we're able to work with to solve these cases. So again, thanks for the time. It's just a great story, and you know, to have that solved with you know in in hours is is really just it's it's a great story for us. So. Very nice. Just a quick question: sure. Is that from a residential video that the Correct. the residents have? So the, Yes, so the, the, the residents had, had very good video and, and we were able to, to look at those images and uh, identify that initial suspect. And when you said it was reported. How was it, who reported it? I'm just curious. That in the landscaper uh, came up, I guess he was going to do, I guess do the yard and kind of heard voices uh, and I, they did the typical thing, they've gone around the backyard after they knocked on doors, they're going to the backyard. I think they tried to take the door but ended up taking like a river rock and uh, passing. So they were in the process of ransacking. So I think the when the landscaper knocked on the door, they actually fled. And he had a vehicle. So it was, yeah, it was, wow. I mean, good work. I mean, it's great that they have video. It's great that the landscaper was, you know, yeah. heads up. So it worked out very well. It did, and, and although we haven't tied this completely together, which is which is another part of our community, we shortly after the the residential burglary, we had a, a resident come into the police department and say, "Hey, I was driving down Winchester and." And saw this vehicle, and they threw this wallet out of the out of the window, um, and so she stopped and grabbed it, brought it to the police department. It was a secondary wallet from our victim, and we went, "Oh my gosh, this is from our burglary." So that, that's where we go. We even obtain more information <laughs> on the vehicle. So it's again, it's about it's about developing those relationships that folks are willing to come to us, talk to us. We're we're that intimately involved in every call that the, our records manager was the one who automatically recognized the address and knew that 
we had officers that had responded to that burglary earlier in the day. So that's great. Great. I have a busy agenda. You, does anybody have any questions? They want to ask I have a question. So these these burglars were kids, right? So they missed school. <laughs> I guess the reason You'll be teaching them soon. Well, the reason I ask that is a couple of weeks ago I saw an article in the Los Gatos Times that said two two juveniles left camp a camp a, a prison camp. And I looked at it and they were the kids that I was teaching. <laughs> so they escaped camp. They burglarized their home and then they got caught. So I was kind of wondering whether this is the same, <laughs> same type of thing. Yeah, we don't. But the next time you get get one of those, give me a call. <laughs> I may <laughs> know them. <laughs> they were my students. Unfortunately, I mean, it's yeah. A lot of the crime, the property crime, is being committed by juveniles. Unfortunately. Yes. I just wanted to say that uh, I apologize. I was going to do more of an introduction, but I was trying to fix the crankers. Um uh, as I communicated to all the city council, I did participate in the um, recruitment, and uh, we had a number of really good candidates, um, but uh, Peter for sure rose way above the rest, and I, I and the others highly recommended him, and uh, was, he was definitely the top choice, and so we, we were thrilled that he decided to say yes, and I think he's going to make a great addition to our community. Sure. Um, I was just going to say, first off, welcome aboard. We're very happy to have you. This is awesome. Um, I just have a favor to ask you. Absolutely. And it's not parking tickets. It's not speeding <laughs> tickets. It's yeah. just make sure Monte Serino is not the poor stepchild. We, we are a big part of this area and want to be treated as such, which we have been yeah. in, the, in the recent past. So that, that's my only request to you. And, and really welcome aboard. Uh, We're happy to have you. And I think that you're going to find I mean, it's, it weighs on everyone's mind. I mean, they're, they're very committed to both communities that we serve. And I, said, I, don't, I, don't think you're, uh, they, I don't think any of the officers I've talked to, certainly not Mike or any of the command staff, consider Montessorino to be the poor stepchild uh, of any, in any way, shape, or form. So the, our, my commitment is that we're going to give you the, the same high level of service that we give uh, Los Gatos as well. Thanks. Yes. Right. All right. Well, thank, thank you, you again. Much. Welcome I, I would, and uh, congratulations on the position. Thank you. You're Mayor. joining an outstanding force. I it, mean, it is. since I've been in this community, nothing but the, the best effort I've ever seen come from the officers here. Okay. And, and the communities are wonderful, too. I, yes. I, and that's what really attracted me to both the Los Gatos and Montes Minas, the high level of community involvement, which is great. So I normally like to stay and just kind of get a sense of the dynamic of uh, how the city council runs. But Usually this works better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but unfortunately, they rescheduled the youth commission uh, for tonight, so I'm, I'm going to run over there and meet uh, the youth commissioners from Los Gatos. So thank you for having me, and I'm, I'm sure I'll be chatting with you soon. All right. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Okay, so in the orders of the day, we have a number of items. Would anybody like to pull any of them? Okay, seeing none, would anybody like to make a motion to approve the orders of the day? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm totally wrong here. I'm sorry, no changes to the orders of the day. That's correct. I'm sorry, oral communications. <laughs> <laughs> You're, you're really getting ahead of yourself. I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, so at this time, anybody wishing to speak on any item that is not on the agenda can come forward and talk to us. So why don't you guys hold off because I think we actually have you under written communications, correct? All right, so we're going to bring you up under the written communications. So no changes to the orders of the day. We've already established that. And now we are on the written communications. And we have four letters, and I have four speaker cards. So I'm going to mix them up so nobody any, any favoritism there. Diana Pleasant, come to the top. Good evening. Thank you so much for considering our application. Um, I'm representing the Los Gatos Community Concert Association. We will be facing our 71st season. Um, of serving our community with a concert series. Um, this year we have our brochures here for you to look at, but we have coming up four wonderful world-class performers held at the Las Gatos High School Theater, 
And um, Sunday afternoons is a perfect time for our communities to stay at home and do something together, cultural and affordable. So we'd appreciate it very much if you would consider our application. Okay. Well, thank you very much. And uh, we have the applications, and we're going to be uh, submitting them to our finance person who's going to include them in our budget. And then when we do our budgeting meeting, which will be next month, we will be making a decision on, on which of these letters and we, we're going to consider and how much we're going to consider for each letter. Thank you very much. Look at our brochure. You may be interested in attending all or one of our concerts. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. And Dan Lawson or Matt Schaefus? Schaefness. Hello, good evening, Mayor and City Council members of Montesarino. It's a pleasure to be here tonight, and thank you for this opportunity. My name is Dan Lawson, and my fellow Rotarian, Matt Schaffnitz. Um, we're here on behalf of Los Gatos Morning Rotary Charitable Foundation, a 501c3, that was founded in 2003. And our mission is to provide for humanities and education in the arts, music, and science. Our benefactors include the Los Gatos High School uh, Boosters, band boosters. We support the NUMU Art Now project where 1,400 students submitted their artwork. We also support Sea Scouts, Boy Scouts, and a very special program that's very near and dear to us is Lighting for Literacy. Uh, we support local school STEM, system, uh, STEM programs where students are building solar panel, uh, they build solar panel LED systems for schools and homes that are located in off-grid areas in different parts of the world, like Asia, Africa, and in Central America. So we are responding to Montesarino's offer to support local community programs with a grant. Our Rotary Club respectfully asks for a grant of 2500 The grant would be used to support our Clause for a Cause event, a tradition in Las Gatas for over 14 years. The fundraiser, hosted by 150 volunteers, is awarded over 300000 dollars in youth education, scholarships, and, ben and the, to the benefactors I previously mentioned. A little history, for those of you who haven't been to the Clause for a Cause, by a show of hands, who has? Well, those who haven't, you, sh you should come because we're, we are doing it again, and this is a little history for you. that It, the, it began at C.B. Hannigan's and became an overnight tradition for our community. It's, it became one of the largest block parties that our community has, and I understand it's voted as one of the top five events in Los Gatos and Montesarino. Um, with C.B. Hannigan's closing this year, our Rotary Club, along with Johnny and Chris, were committed and determined to find a new location and keep the tradition alive. And we have, in fact, found a new home, and that is at the Los Gatos Lodge. Um, with this change, the systems are going to be different, and, and we are going to be experiencing different challenges, and part of that challenge is additional cost. And our goal is not to increase ticket prices, but to obtain support from town grants, local businesses, and individuals to help us keep our community efforts alive and thriving. And again, for those of you who haven't been, it's a wonderful event with fresh-cooked main lobster, delicious sides, dancing under the stars, and friends and family celebrating in our beautiful community all while supporting the vital programs that are very dear and near to our hearts as Rotarians. So thank you very much for your time and consideration. Okay, thank you very much. I had a quick question for you, oh, though. Please, yes. Since you are moving Clause for Cause over to the Los Gatos Lodge, are you going to stay open later this time, since you're not in the neighborhood? And Well, as a matter of fact, because there are homes just up the hill, we are still probably going to be limited to our 10 o'clock timeline. Oh, okay. The, the band certainly likes to play a little longer, and we, we do sneak it's a little an awesome bit. awesome band. Yeah, they're, they're, it's going to be the hitmen again. We may entertain end. one additional encore. <laughs> okay. Or two. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Jonathan Knowles. Hello. Um, uh, thank you for your service. It's always a pleasure to be here in Montesarino and see you folks. Just on the police chief, um, the same reason I'm here tonight uh, is why we have this police foundation that you guys have been supporting. It's that sense of community we all uh, appreciate and get out of what it makes it so special here. So 
Uh, one thing to know about, he mentioned the video thing. It might be a good time for you to be reminded about the On Watch program, one of the foundation's programs. This is a thing people can sign up for, and it just lets the police department know that you have video in case something happens. You don't have to give them anything, but you can just they can just go and say, are you willing to do it? I actually was able to use that at a burglar on my street for them a few years ago. So this thing really works, and more people have these than ever before. So let's keep doing that. And I'm happy to say that the for the first time, the Taste of Los Gatos, the Police Foundation's uh, annual fundraiser event, will be in Montesorino this year. So we're happy about that. Awesome. From uh, uh, Los Gatos Music and Arts, we have appreciated your support uh, your partnership for many years, and we hope we can continue to do that. It's great when we see you guys come to the event. It's great that we have all the people in our community coming together and sharing in that wonderful thing that is human creativity. Um, but we do this because we support uh, education programs for youth. So we go out and we uh, raise the funds to do the concert and do those education programs one dollar at a time uh, through local sponsorship, very consciously to make sure that the community is invested in lots of ways. And that's why we continue to come to you and the local businesses. So thank you for your consideration. As always, I'm going to give you all my business cards, not because you don't already have my contact info, but on the back is the schedule for all the Jazz on the Plaza concerts this year. So this is your pocket guide to the series. Cool. There you go. Thank you very much. Any questions? Anybody have any questions? Uh, I had one question. So are you still doing different nights for some of the different sponsors? Oh, well, only you guys. Only uh, you and guys. so, yes, we've, we've never stopped doing Montessorino Night. Uh, even if we don't know exactly for sure when it's going to be, like if you guys haven't, so you get, can choose. We have uh, recommendations so you don't get lost. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, we'll, as always, work with you guys to do Montessorino Night. Okay. That is unique to you. We don't. We don't even do that for Los Gatos. <laughs> so I would just really think it's really special to recognize that we are one community and not separated by those arbitrary lines when it comes to community. So, yes, the answer is let's do it. Okay, that's great. And as soon as we can get a date, we'd really like to plug it because um, I know last year we didn't get the date till almost a couple of days before. And, and our section looked a little thin there. It did. I don't know if you remember, but I started making every night Monte Serino night there for a little while just to make up for that. So <laughs> anyway, thank you all, all right. very much. Thanks a lot. <laughs> and last but not least, Susan Ward. Hello, everyone. My name is Susan Ward, and I'm with the Art Docents of Los Gatos. And I am just here to remind you of our need. It uh, came last year, and... Some new faces. I don't know how many of you know about the Ardosans of Los Gatos, but we teach over 3,000 students a year and 1,000 man hours, um, all volunteer. There are 70 Ardosans, and we, I, I can't imagine not doing it. We've been doing it since 1973. We're in our 45th year, and we rely completely on donations. Uh, you know, everyone's talking about STEM and STEAM. And what I see as a, a teacher is the student that uh, can't, um, that's allowed to just think independently and freely for that half hour or 45 minutes that we're there, that's not brought into just math, science, engineering, whatever the, you know, the, the curriculum is, and just free think. It, it's amazing for them, but it's more amazing for us. So we appreciate your support, and we hope you'll continue to support. Thank you very much. Great. Any questions? Okay, thanks. Okay, so now we are at the consent calendar, items one through eight. And did anybody wish to pull any items from the consent calendar or have any questions? Okay. Anybody interested in making a motion? I have a motion. We have a motion. And we now have a second. So now we can... Ready for the vote? Okay, do you have a vote? Yeah, the voting. Hopefully it will still work. Oh. No? Let's see. I don't have a voting button yet. Yeah. I don't have a voting yeah. button. You do? Do not. <laughs> it's still, and the motion thing is still up, so. Should we motion? So our motion, we, wait a minute, we, 
Okay, we have a motion, we have a second. I just second it because it didn't work the first time around. And now the motion thing is back up again. Yeah, the motion button um, is unchecked again. I think you need to do this by. Hold on, hold on. Not going to work. Hold on, hold on. Okay, so we need a second. Second has been made. And. Oh, you optimist again. Call for the vote. Or request for the vote. Da 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 da. It's not coming up. That's Jeopardy. <laughs> okay, well then let's just uh, all in favor of moving the consent calendar forward. Aye. Say aye. 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 Okay, that passes unanimously. All in favor? Thank you. <laughs> hey, my optimism, it works occasionally. <laughs> I apologize. It's okay, Terry. Right? Now we're. Hopefully it's not working. It's going to be a while. It's this okay, so well, item number nine, user and regulatory fees. And I think <coughs> we're going to have staff introduce us. So. We are. So as part of last year's budget, the city council approved a line item to have a consultant take a look at our user and regulatory fees. And we were awesome enough to have management partners help us with finding uh, a consultant. And we ended up with the group Clear Source, and Terry Madsen is here tonight. He is, uh, you're one of their principals, right? Yeah, one of the principals there. And he has been assisting us, working with Sue, working with all the staff a whole lot, in um, gathering all kinds of data and information and putting together this fee study and ultimately making recommendations. And we are, so tonight is really basically a study session so we can introduce the topic Give you go over the uh, findings with you, um, make our recommendations, and then get your feedback. And then what we will do is we will bring the actual fee um, uh, chart, the fee uh, schedule. Schedule. That's why I couldn't think of the, word. the fee schedule with the resolution uh, at the next council meeting. So with that, I'm going to introduce Terry. It's awesome to meet another Terry. I don't often do that. <laughs> Uh, Mayor and members of the City Council, thank you for allowing me to speak with you this evening. Uh, the topic is broad because uh, the user and regulatory fee world, um, there's, there's many different fees. So we have a thorough presentation for you this evening. I'm going to walk through some of the slides more quickly than others, but I want to accomplish two things. One is to make sure we speak the same general language as it relates to fee studies, and the other is to point out specific findings related to Monte Sereno that came about as a result of this study. <clears throat> so throughout the state, communities um, establish user and regulatory fees, and they periodically conduct what we call fee studies. Fee studies provide the city council with information regarding how much it costs to provide certain services, and then you can use that information to make policy decisions regarding whether you want to recover those costs from fee payers or to subsidize those costs from your general fund. Um, as communities uh, develop and focus more on their available revenues, they're, they're facing this constant challenge of, um, can I find specific revenue sources to fund services that provide a more specific benefit, which will hopefully free up more of my general revenue sources to provide services that provide a more general or community-wide benefit. Additionally, um, establishing fees helps communities ensure that service level expectations will continue to be met. So your public says, um, I value this level of service. I like having my inspectors come out. I like this type of turnaround time, that kind of thing. Establishing fees for service helps ensure that we can fund that service level expectation. User and regulatory fees, the fees that we're examining this evening, are set at the direction of the city council. So you conduct a public hearing, and then you determine whether to adopt the fees as long as they follow certain legal parameters. And the primary parameters are that the fees you collect should not exceed your cost of providing the services, and that 
the fees you ask for should be proportional to the service received. So more complex service would pay a higher fee than a less complex service, or at least we'd cost it out that way. You can make decisions about choosing to subsidize certain fees and not others, but the bottom line is we want to do proportionality tests and we want to make sure that we're not profiting from these fee-related services. Once we start profiting, then we move into the world of tax, and a tax is adopted via different mechanisms. The, <coughs> the fees we examine in this study are typically development-related fees, so your planning fees, your public works engineering fees, and your building fees like plan review and permitting. And what we found is that overall, the city under-recovers uh, its cost to providing services. That was not an unexpected finding. It's been many years since you conducted a formal fee study. I think historically um, you may have done some regional fee comparisons and felt comfortable that the amounts we're asking for are not exceeding our threshold, so we're going to establish them here. But this study allows you to identify, hey, what is our legal ceiling? And what the study showed was in, based on your legal ceiling, you could actually increase fees without... Uh, uh, exceeding your cost of service. If you did choose to increase fees, then you would by definition be uh, relieving the general fund of amounts that it's currently subsidizing for those fee-related services. Again, if uh, at the conclusion of this meeting you say, hey, we're interested in moving forward with considering uh, adopting updated fees, you would instruct the city manager to notice a public hearing, and then at a subsequent meeting you conduct that public hearing. This evening also provides you a chance, though, to provide any initial feedback. So sometimes councils say, thank you for providing this report. Um, I'm curious about if we could move a little different direction here or a little different direction there. If you have any of that kind of feedback, we're, we're happy to receive it. So one more topic before we dive into the Monte Serino world. Uh, once we start talking about Monte Serino, you're going to hear me reference two phrases frequently. One is... Um, cost of service and the other is cost recovery and I want to outline those two uh, to make sure that we are in uh, line with how we think about those. So <clears throat> we identify the cost of service and it can be expressed really as uh, we value an hour of labor time and then we say typically how long does it take us to provide that service uh, and that is expressive of our cost of service. So we could say hey our labor time is valued at 150 bucks an hour and something takes us two hours to perform. That's a $300 cost of service. If we are worth $150 an hour and it took us an hour to perform, we'd say the cost of service is $150. When we discuss the concept of cost recovery, we say we know something takes us $300 to perform, but we choose as a city to ask for a $150 fee. The cost didn't change the only thing that changes is where that cost is being paid from. So in the case of a $300 cost of service and a $150 fee, we'd say 50% of that cost is being recovered from the fee payer and the other 50% is being borne by the general fund. And so depending on the level of fees you choose uh, affects your cost recovery level. When we say full cost recovery, we say the fee payer is covering the full cost of service. And when we say partial cost recovery, we say it's a combination of fee payer and city general fund. So now specific findings for your community. Um, overall, we would say <coughs> that of the fee-related services we examined, um, the fees today recover 56% of the city's cost of service in aggregate. So maybe certain fees recover 20% and others recover 100% of the cost of service, but as a whole, we're recovering 56% of the cost of service. And you can see that recovery ranges between planning, public works, building, and community planning at different levels. If we know we're recovering 56% of the cost of service, we can express it in dollar figures by saying today, the city brings in roughly 430,000 in fee-related revenue, but expends roughly 800000 to provide those services. And so there is a $350,000 general fund subsidy today. Um, so there is room for immediate fee adjustment if the city council 
uh, desire to do that. Um, we, the, the fees proposed for, we, we wanted to illustrate a scenario that we thought made sense. So in our scenario, we would say for most development related services, we would target full cost recovery. That's common in California communities with specific instances of continued subsidy where we're worried about um, maybe compliance or where we wanna focus on beautification efforts or community collaboration, things like that. So uh, examples of those services that would continue to target some form of general fund subsidy would be tree removal permits, fence height review permits, solar permits, and appeals of uh, commission decisions or director level decisions. <clears throat> So we are not recommending that you become entirely fee supported, but we are recommending that you move towards increased cost recovery. And uh, it, it depends on the level of current under recovery. So in some cases, we might have a 20% cost recovery for a planning fee and we say, yes, long term, we'd like to get to full cost recovery, but maybe we won't get there overnight. So instead we'll phase into 50% and then we'll do 10% increases over time. And particularly when we think about those is when we think about uh, maybe minor projects or projects that would be particularly sensitive to a <coughs> resident or a smaller project um, where we say, hey, let's phase in versus any sort of significant development where the development community really does expect to pay full freight for uh, development related projects in California. Um, Again, we would recommend a phase-in approach for some of these, but for others, we'd say you're already close, like at the building fee world, you are close to full cost recovery today, and you can get to full cost recovery without too aggressive of a jump, and so we think it merits moving that direction. So it's on a case-by-case -case basis is what we're, we're recommending. Uh, based on our recommendations, if, if the city council would like to do move forward with them, you'd transition from a 56% cost recovery to a 77% cost recovery in aggregate, and it would result in 164,000 of additional general fund revenues. I want to note that it's not 164,000 of expanded service level. The service level is presumed to remain unchanged. It's just how are we funding those services? Using our phase-in approach and believing that these fees will continue to be proactively managed on a year-to-year -year basis. We would say after this one-time change, we would expect additional year revenues to increase by roughly $20,000 a year, assuming development trends remained relatively similar to what they are today. So if development drops, you would assume the revenue would drop. If it increases even more, you would assume the revenue increases even more. <coughs> Your costs of service are unique to Montecerino. Your community is unique. Your labor structure is unique where you use a combination of in-house and contract services, those kind of things. So I always am hesitant to provide a regional fee comparison, but I do know that it helps the city council get a handle on, uh, dear consultant, thank you for this report, but what are you really asking me to do and what would I look like compared to my neighbors if I said yes to this, that kind of thing. So we have provided a regional fee comparison. Um, and what we do is we try and pick out fees that we can see commonly appear on other agencies' fee schedules or fees for things that we consider like high volume permits, the stuff that's gonna come in the door day after day, or the stuff that might be sensitive to like a subsidy, like a tree removal permit. Where we know in Monte Serino, the cost of processing a tree removal permit, administering that permit, is actually an expensive process. It involves a lot of labor time and a lot of bodies, but we're asking to continue to subsidize it and asking for that, is that in line with what other communities do as well? So what we find is that <coughs> over and over, um, the proposed fees will not move you into the range of a regional outlier, either to the low end or the high end. Um, today, you err towards the low to mid end, and tomorrow, if you adopted these fees, you'd be in that mid range typically. So it depends on the fee, but for the most part, we saw you appearing middle, middle, middle over and over. This is an illustration of 
permit and plan check fees of a new 3,000 square foot house and a thousand square foot garage. Um, the, these are the kind of numbers we're seeing. And so, um, again, you'd be in the middle of the road. HVAC change out is a small permit, so small heater furnace change out. Again, you're at the low end of the scale today, so we're saying it's actually you are a regional outlier to the low end, and moving yourself to cost recovery would put you into the mid range of what the region is doing. Um, solar panels today, uh, historically, the city has not collected a permit fee for solar panels, and when solar was first starting, um, that wasn't very that wasn't uncommon. There were other communities that charged no permit fee. But today, most communities do charge a permit fee, and occasionally they're significantly higher than even what you're proposing. So usually, uh, they lean towards those state maximums of like four or five hundred dollars for a solar permit fee. What we're proposing here is to treat them like a minor uh, trade permit fee, like an HVAC change out or something like that. Uh, general plan update fee. This is a fee that is not on the books today in Monte Serino because you haven't done a fee study in many years. But more and more communities are looking to recover at least some of the costs of developing their long-range documents that influence development um, from fees. So these are costs that may not appear in your annual budget, but you know at some point you're going to be asked by your city manager or your city planning department for $800,000 or a million dollars of one-time money to update certain plans and documents. This says, hey, from these development-related permits, let's collect a little bit of that over time and earmark it for use to update those plans when the time comes. And so not every community we explored had that fee, but several of your neighbors did, including Los Gatos and Saratoga. The proposed fee would be less than the fee they currently collect. Uh, planning review of building permits. This is another fee that you don't have on the books today. I'm illustrating some of these unique scenarios. So for several of your building permits, there is a planning function that actually happens as well. So I'm in the building permit stage, but the planning department needs to make sure that setback requirements are met, certain <coughs> guidelines are, are, uh, are met. And so this allows the planning function to recover a little bit of their time involved in that permit processing effort. Again, your fee, um, we, we decided to phase this in since it hasn't been collected before. So it's, the target amount is less than the city's cost of service, but we thought, let's go somewhere. Let's see what applicant feedback is, and let's phase in future increases over time, assuming that, uh, that we don't get a lot of pushback and that this fee works the way we imagine it would work. Tree removal permit, this is a service where we recommend a continued subsidy based on our conversations with staff. Uh, they're worried that even though we identify, let's say, an ex uh, extensive process, maybe even involving commission meetings and things like that, um, that if we charge full freight for this, people are going to be getting their chainsaws out on Saturday, <laughs> hoping that uh, no one's looking and saying, let's just get the job done. But really what you're trying to do is say, hey, let's promote beautification in Monte Serino and let's make sure we're all following the same rules about what we're doing here. So the idea of a subsidized fee is recommended for continuance here. And it looks like, based on what we're seeing, most communities are recovering less than their likely cost of service. Appeals fees are fees, again, these are services that are extremely expensive to a city. When an appeal comes through the door, and it probably doesn't happen often, but when it does happen, it's hours and hours of staff time, your time, attorney time, but historically these have been set at less than full cost recovery to encourage uh, people's ability to appeal. Um, that is still the case where these are typically subsidized fees, but the, the fee world is moving towards more cost recovery in order to say, hey, let's recognize there is a cost here and, uh, and let's at least recover some of that cost. Uh, so it's a balancing act between encouraging people's ability to appeal but not encouraging frivolous appeals either. So we're just moving this into the range of what we're typically seeing more and more, particularly in this northern Bay Area and southern Bay Area. <clears throat> 
final parcel map. This is a fee you don't have on the books today. You probably don't have a ton of these requests, but when a subdivision is happening, there's a tentative map process, and then there's a final map review process. Your engineering staff performs work every time a final map is recorded, and so this allows the city to recover that engineering time. Again, the proposed fee is in the mid-range of what we see. Grading permits, we're moving these, um, but for the smaller projects, we're saying let's phase in that move. So a smaller grading project today would be set at 50% cost recovery, a medium size would be set at 75% cost recovery, and a large would be set at full cost recovery. And over time, we try and get these small and mediums up into that full cost recovery range as well. So again, these fees are set at your direction. I always try and remind the council, you're being asked to consider lots of fees. Staff has done their best. I'm, I was very impressed with your team. I was impressed with the way they knew the answers to our questions and the feedback they had. Um, anytime you do a study like this and you modify many fees at once, there's a likelihood that six months from now, someone's gonna walk in the door and we're gonna calculate their fee and say, what just happened? Uh, what we expected to happen didn't play out on paper. This fee schedule gives staff the ability to say, uh, if something is not playing out on paper, if the fee we're charging you isn't commensurate with the service we're giving you, we can bill you on a time and materials basis and then come back to the council and say, we need to clean this one up. So we got 100 right, uh, two of them we, w we feel like we got over aggressive on or something like that, let's clean these two up, the others are good. So uh, you can always modify uh, on a case-by-case -case basis. Again, in order to make any formal decisions, we need a public hearing. We provide a public notice via newspaper um, and allow the community to speak. But if you have any general feedback or comments tonight that you would like to see incorporated before we get to that stage, I'm available to receive any questions or receive any feedback you have. Thank Terry, you. do you wanna, uh, just one last thing, do you wanna uh, pull up the Oh yes. Yeah, we Thank you, uh, we had a, we had one question, and I appreciate your questions in advance. And the question was, uh, could we get a comparison for a typical single-family home, new, new construction of what the planning, building, and engineering fees uh, are current, and what they would be proposed under uh, the new fee schedule? So we created this chart here, which shows you that. Under the current fees, planning, building, and engineering for a typical new single-family residence comes out to about 30, a little more than 31,000. With the proposed changes, uh, the fees would increase to about 35,000. And these do not include, as you'll see, I put an asterisk there, school district fees, fire department plan review and permit fees, uh, sewer hookup, uh, and any fees related to the water company. And those, of course, are not affected by the study. So I... <laughs> But, and I, uh, and I did not have time because I only got the question today to look all those up. But the, 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 they don't represent as much as the, the fees you see here. But I just wanted to give the city council uh, a, a little idea of the change in, in the amount of fees. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Do we have any questions for staff? Yes, Council Member Turner. Yeah, I. I can you, can you clarify this for me? One of the things that you said is we're not providing additional service mm -hmm. and it's still a fee. And if we're not providing additional service, wouldn't that be a tax? What I, what I meant to say, if it didn't come across clearly, was if you receive new revenue via fee increases, it doesn't imply that you're going to go higher to new buy. Let's say you have 164000 in new fee revenue it wasn't assumed that with that revenue, you would go find two new bodies. Instead, what you'd be doing is eliminating part of your under recovery. So today, your cost recovery is 56%. If you added 164,000 revenue, your cost recovery would be 73%. So it's the exact same service, it's just le more of that service is being funded by fee payers than the general fund taxpayers. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So, so, can I ask another yep. question? Um, for example, some of your fees here, 
have to do with, for example, the tree permit. Yes. Are you talking about just one tree at $100, or are you talking about one trip at $100? No, it's, it's one permit, which could include Three or four dozens trees. of trees. Yeah, okay. it's, it's just a flat rate. Okay. Per branch. <laughs> <laughs> Her root. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it could be costly. This 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 hall will be full. <laughs> yes. Yes, Councilmember Member Ann Stanley. Yeah, uh, going back to uh, slide number ten. Um, you got listed there the uh, the fee related expenses, and what what constitutes the seven hundred and eighty thousand dollars? <clears throat> Thank you for asking. It is a multitude of things. I think I got this coming to you. Can you yeah. see it? Yeah. So fee-related expenses are a combination of typically what we call it is labor, and it could be either in-house labor or your contract services that are functioning almost as labor, and then services and supplies that are used by that labor. So... Uh, uniforms, vehicles, uh, insurance costs, those kind of things, and then citywide overhead. So um, a, your city exists for the purpose of providing direct services to the community, but in order to provide those direct services, we have certain central services like payroll, city attorney, city clerk, city council, that allow, that inform and guide those direct service providers. And so we allocate a share of those central service costs to the direct service departments. We use a proportional allocation. So it's a, there's a weighting. It's not like we're uh, layering in the entire cost of central services on these departments or anything like that. It's just a weighted allocation. So, so if I understand, and thanks, thanks for the ex thorough explanation, but if I understand it correctly then, the salaries of the city planner, the salaries of the city inspector, and the outsourcing fees that we might pay to an engineer to do particular studies are all included in here and currently would be part of our budget that we uh, establish year after year to provide the various services that they would already be providing. You're, you're absolutely correct. The salaries of those staff are included in here. And what I would illustrate is, but not all of them, only their fee-related costs are included in here. So you have public works budget that is significantly larger than the 169000 you're seeing here. But the 169000 represents, of that total public works budget, we believe these are fee-related expenditures. The rest of those expenditures in public works would be funded from some other source other than fees. We couldn't layer them onto the backs of fee payers. Right, because they could be activities like going to the counter and answering questions, or someone calls in for a call, or it could be... Filling uh, a city pothole. Yeah, or fill, yes, or like when we, when we replaced all the street signs, we don't charge the community a fee for the labor that's involved in that. And so those, those are not reflected in fee-related expenses. But I, I, guess, I guess what I'm getting at is if, 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 um, if nobody, apply, nobody filed a permit yeah. for anything, we had a 12 months of no development or planned development going on at all, um, we would still incur these same expenses? Or no. They, they would not be included? They would be zero. Them? The fee-related expenses would be zero, correct? They would be zero in this analysis. It would be up to the city to decide whether you wanted to continue to employ a building inspector. So if you have no development, by definition, you would need no building department. So we would say the reason a building department exists is to serve the development community. Um, but there were times, you know, when the economy turned many years ago, there was institutional knowledge kept it. it so many cities did layoffs. But occasionally they kept staff that were underutilized because they said, we know this economy is going to turn. But the bottom line is um, we would believe that 
you would have no reason to keep fee-related service providers if you had no fee-related services to provide. It would just be a judgment call on whether you wanted to continue to budget for those amounts. Okay. And the, uh, I got to have a couple more questions too. On the, um, uh, I guess it's chart number 18, <coughs> or slide number 18, I should say. Yes. Under community planning, what, what, what would constitute community planning? So that's a fee that's being recommended as part of this study. And uh, communities are allowed to recover uh, the costs of preparing the documents that inform development in the community. So typically we think of this as the general plan, maybe the zoning code update, housing element. These are things that uh, development relies on in order to be permitted. And so a portion of those costs are born in this community planning fee. And so we would say the expectation is not that development would pay for all of those costs, but they would pay for a share of those costs. I guess I'm confused by that because who would be who pays who, for who's, it? Who's, who's paying this? Yeah. this so whenever you come to get a building, so whenever you come to get a building permit, it would be levied on the valuation. It's the typical way that it's done. And so if you're, um, you know, if your home building valuation is $800,000, then it's a percentage. It's a very small percentage, but it's a percentage of that because that's considered your impact on the development world within the city. So if I'm, if I'm redoing the, the, the plumbing in my house uh, for which I would need to get permits in order to do that, I'm going to also pay a portion? No, of not necessarily. And Terry and I talked about this because I worked on this exact fee in the last place I worked. And there we exempted a lot, many of the small permits, plumbing for fixtures, HVAC, um, re-roofing. It's really meant for additions, new construction. So we would have a, a within the fee schedule, um, you know, limitations on it. And, and that's how we base the recommendation on. And so the, the idea is we would never collect enough to cover the cost of a general plan update, a new zoning ordinance rewrite, but we would still have, you know, be banking some money towards that. Because typically in the past, those types of documents were strictly funded out of the general fund. I was wondering the disparity also on the, uh, the fees for the residential solar. It's, it mm -hmm. seems like in an, er in an era where we're trying to be as, you know, getting away from, you know, the utility companies and so on and having people do things, you know, the, the fees, you know, obviously we've not charged anything, but they go up for a, a similar community to ours, like Los Altos Hills, all the way up to $500. And I'm just wondering, doesn't that begin to create a disincentive to, to do these types of projects? I know that it's, I, I know somebody may say for the cost, 500 bucks is not much, but, but the minute you begin taxing, so to speak, people for doing things that they're otherwise used to doing without paying a fee, they're gonna yeah, consider it's, a tax. You know, it, it, w originally, whenever solar was, you know, becoming more common, most communities, as Terry pointed out, um, didn't charge anything. It was an incentive. But it is such a common, you know, type of permit that we issue now, and it is, you know, becoming not quite a water heater or a re-roofing that I think most communities have decided it's, it's no longer necessary or really even desirable to subsidize it any longer. Can I, can I follow up on that question and then I'll let you continue? Sure. So just along that line, we weren't charging a fee which would encourage people to, well, it's just a small incentive to say, hey, you know what, put your solar heater or your, your uh, solar panels up now because you're going to save a couple hundred dollars. Now, do we have an idea of how many solar permits we're getting? Because I'll just say that uh, when I had mine put up last year, I know Rob was out for, you know, he came out twice and probably spent a total of about six hours or so to do the inspections and everything. So if we're doing now a hundred of these things, you know, maybe it is time to start taking a look at a fee. But it'd be interesting for some of these fees that, that we're looking to, to increase, you know, what, what, is the, what is the amount of, um, of work that we're actually putting into them these days? I can, I can tell you that Rob provided us with a list of every permit issued in a calendar year, and solar is one of your high-volume permits. 
So it is a common request. Uh, I can also tell you in case it's helpful, um, the way communities decided to uh, move away from this subsidy, one of the ways they decided to move away from the subsidy was to decide whether um, providing the subsidy encouraged more permit requests. And the couple communities that I've seen do that sort of study felt like it doesn't, it doesn't really impact the number of permit requests we're getting. Um, so it takes away the idea that by offering you zero dollar permit, you're more likely to come pull that permit. Um, but the way they get to a $500 fee is exactly as the mayor mentioned. So those communities are saying it's two inspections at $175 an inspection and a plan review at $175 a plan review and it takes it to $500. So you're, you're already erring on the side of conservative in this proposed fee. So just to understand it, currently somebody, somebody if they're going to put solar in, has to get a permit to begin with. To get a permit, and, it's just a zero. We're just, okay, and I, I, I haven't put it in, so I don't know. I didn't, I didn't know realize that. that. Yeah. I didn't, didn't know that. Okay. Um, and then lastly, our two, the last two questions. Uh, if, we, if we modify the schedule, how quickly can we put it into effect? It goes into effect July the 1st. And if it goes into effect then July the 1st, uh, how, what types of fees would we generate from La Hacienda? I They've already paid their fees because they applied prior to this fee study being completed. But so they'd still be subject to the building fees, engineering, for the plan check review. The they, yeah. planning fees they've paid. What about so the community the community fee portion percentage since uh, that obviously has a big impact on the community? Typically since they've already made their application, they would not be subject to that, I would say. I mean, it's typical that if a, a person's filed an application, at the time they file the application, the fees that were applicable at the time. Now, the, they was, the, the building permit, the plan check, the building permit itself, all, they would be paying the higher fees for that. And public works and plan check and so forth. And, and, and Terry, it just uh, based on your experience in modifying or not in increasing, because none of these are we're proposing to go down, we're all proposing to go up. For the most part, they're either staying the same or going. What's been your experience with other communities when they try to do this in terms of the citizen reaction and then ultimately have the councils voted them through or not? So the feedback I, I really give to city councils is, and I work with, on the opposite side of the table, I work extensively with building industry associations. So associations that represent the tradesmen that go and pay these fees. And over and over, they give me two points of feedback, uh, or maybe three points of feedback. The number one feedback is they understand that they're going to be asked to pay uh, for their share of development. Uh, so they understand the concept that we are going to be expected to pay fees. And in the development world, close to full freight, there's still certain planning fees where we subsidize activities and things like that. But building permits, full freight. What they ask us to do is not go long periods of time in between fee increases. So they say, don't, don't wait 20 years. Give me a little bit every year so that I can sort of plan on 2 or 3 percent coming this year, that kind of thing. Where, they, where we bother them is where we go 10 years, nothing, and then 100% increase, 10 years, nothing, 100% increase. And then the third point of feedback they give us is really what they want more than anything is a high level of service. So if we can offer them fast turnaround times, professional environment, professional service, assistance at the counter when they need it, there's value to them in getting a project completed from start to finish. Um, in a way that the community is really making an effort. And I would say editorially, I spoke with your planning staff, and Monty Serino seems like it makes an incredible effort to turn around things very quickly. So I, I talked to your planning department, and she said, what I do is I meet with applicants extensively before they actually submit, because from when they submit, we're going to bless this project quickly. Hopefully, it'll be a matter of weeks for us to say yes or no. So I'm working extra hard with them to say, let's build this thing right so we can say yes to you in a quick time. That's what my fee payers are asking for. 
And, and to that last point, you know, from my experience working in other organizations, I can say without a doubt, there is no one that provides the level of service, personalized, as well as the turnaround times and professionalism of any place I am aware of, as we do. Um, we are just phenomenal, in t especially with the turnaround times. It's just unheard of. So I, I think the, that, you know, we're, we are, especially to the last point, you know, we're, we are providing what they're looking for. And the, the overall idea here is we're just asking to have the cost of the labor and the associated uh, uh, things that go along with labor to recover more of that and less of it being subsidized by our general fund. And City Council Member Anstey, may I make one more comment on regarding your question? The other point of feedback I'd make to you is I have never met a council yet that actually wants to increase fees. Um, so there is no council that takes pleasure in it. Uh, there is no council that says, I'm so glad your report came back with uh, increased fees. Um, but you are the ones faced with the challenge of deciding how am I going to spend the city's revenues. And so this is, this is simply a document to help you make decisions about uh, what, what do I want to fund from some specific revenue source versus a community-wide revenue source. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so Council Member Rogers, and then Turner and Wilsheimer. Okay, I had a few things. First of all, on the service side, you know, I'm working with Rob, and it's it's amazing how how great of a job he's done. He's there, everything. So I, I agree. I think we offer incredible services. <clears throat> I just a couple points. Um, first of all, we compared not middle to most of these cities. We were pretty much on, as you guys could see, we were on the low side for almost everything. So reducing it doesn't, isn't gonna put us in a bad position. I was wondering, could we maybe have some special fees or something for our secondary, um, for our secondary dwellings, some kind of a moratorium over a period of time be because we are encouraging them to build the secondary dwellings? We, we currently well, let me just speak to that. Yes, completely. Yeah, we currently don't require any planning uh, review at all. There's no planning fees. They just have to pay the very standard um, fees for building plan check, and I believe they get reduced fees on a number of other know, for connections and so forth. No, we number. did it my last time I was on the council. Yeah, I, I don't I know what's happening now. There, so now the the process for accessory dwelling units has changed, so there is no discretionary approval anymore. So now you just go straight to building permit. Okay. Um, so it will just be based on square footage. Okay, because I, I just want to definitely keep so keep that moratorium going and encourage people to build these secondary units. Um, and then I'm thinking since we're going to have this July 1st, we're going to raise the rates. There should be plenty of advance notice for the public, so if they want to get something started before that time, I think they should be able to, so they can save save some money knowing that this yes, is going to happen. Yes, we can absolutely do that. Yeah, and I'm I'm kind of on the fence on the solar thing. That's the one thing that I'm just not sure about because I. But if if you don't believe that that you know the fee really discourages solar, then I can go with it. But you know, we want to encourage the, the solar in the city. And let's see if I had anything else. Nope, that's pretty much it. My biggest question was on the secondary dwellings. Okay. And Council Member Turner. Yeah, I just wanted to ask you, um, the fee amounts that you have here, it, if I were to draw a conclusion looking at the various slides, the way we positioned our fees is we're not going to be higher than Los Altos Hills, and we're not, but we are higher than Los Gatas, Pertola Valley, and Woodside. So is that how we determine the fees that came in here, that are in here? No, this was okay. the actual regional fee comparison was the last part of the study that we did. We had already received feedback from staff regarding proposed fees. We'd already calculated our cost of service. And then we used that information and said, okay, we believe this is staff's recommendation, but in order to aid the council, we want to go show them what the region is charging for these same services. But there was no deliberate effort to stay at less than 
somebody and more than somebody else. It was just coincidence. I guess um, the problem that I'm having with this is the final parcel map from, from zero to $3,000. That's from which one, Rowena? Page. page. I don't think those are page numbered. Um, four lots or less? Yeah. <laughs> That's a fee final you don't parcel. have on the books today. So I, uh, most cities, 99%. <coughs> 100% of cities I've seen, except for Monte Sereno, have a, they collect a fee for reviewing final parcel maps. And I don't know if it was just an oversight in Monte Sereno when the fee schedule was developed or not, or if it was purposeful. But when we spoke with the public work staff and even the planning side of the shop, they said, we're always asking them, is there something missing? Is there something we should remove because it's antiquated? Those kind of things. And one of the things they said is, hey, we don't have a final map fee and I think they're rare I think you might get maybe one or two a year if that um, but it's it's not uncommon to <coughs> collect the fee the three thousand dollars didn't seem like a bizarre amount to me but you could decide to say I would like to go somewhere less than that if you wanted um, the actual cost of that service <coughs> We estimated that the city's actual cost of that service was about $3,200. So the number was rounded to the nearest thousand. It was just rounded down to 3000 But this would be a fee that's targeting roughly full cost of service at 3000 If you said, I'd like to phase that in over time and start at 50% cost recovery or 75% cost recovery, it's totally your call. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. And Council Member Wilson. Thank you. Uh, I actually had four questions, but two of them were answered already, so that's very efficient. Um, you mentioned overhead and overhead allocation. Mm -hmm. Are, on these fees, what percentage is typically overhead allocation? Uh, give me a moment. So <clears throat> I'm doing a quick, a quick look, but I think it's in the ballpark for, for all of them. But what I'm seeing is labor represents between 65 and 70% of your cost of service. Services and supplies and citywide overhead represent between 30 and 35% of your cost of service. And that ratio doesn't feel unreasonable to me based on what we've seen in the industry. Okay, thank you. Um, the other one is uh, specific about one of the fees, the, uh, the appeal fee, mm -hmm. which would be increased significantly and would be higher than, for example, Los Gatos. I think uh, we don't want to encourage people necessarily from appealing decisions that have been made by somebody in the city, site and architecture, for example. So I'm a, I'm a little bit concerned about the $1,000 fee there. One thing, I can I just comment on that? You others. can, and also Los Gatos, just to identify, it has two different fees. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but we don't have any commercial. Not residential, all. right. It's, okay. all, it's all residential, and there are 400, and we're 1,000 yeah. now. What I have seen some communities do is um, offer an option of paying a fee or if you can, say, collect a number of signatures of your, you know, from the community that can then reduce the fee. I mean, you've seen this before, have you not? I, I haven't seen it, but it feels logical to me. So you're saying if there's enough community interest in this appeal, then it would be like it would be logical to collect less revenue because clearly there's more than one person interested. Right. In it. So I won't mention the city, but there was a city I worked for at one point, and while they did have an appeal fee, which was high enough to 
just keep the average person who may just be irritated or, you know, not really have a sound reason to appeal from appealing. But if they felt they really did, then they could, you know, potentially gather signatures. I mean, that is one possibility. But of course, it's it's also, you know, to to lower it closer to what it is is possibility as well. One one sure. one final point. The uh, we were talking about solar. There um there was a major milestone actually in the month of March. Uh, I forgot which day it was, but it was, a, it was a nice sunny day and between 1 p.m. and 2 p.m. California generated over 100% of the electrical um demand from solar. No way. Yes. So that was a major major oh. step. So the, um People are saying that the future is not so much in solar cells, it's about storage. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, you cannot, yeah. yeah. What do you do with the, uh, the electricity that you can't use during the middle of the day, but you do need it at night? Yeah, and we've also had issues where we just are producing so much solar that we've been selling it almost at a loss to places like Arizona Nevada, and Nevada. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. So. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Any other? Yes, Councilmember. Yeah, I, I'd echo the comments about the appeals fee. I, I think you know, I think we had one appeal in the last you know, last year that I can remember uh, uh, that came from Site and Architecture, and I can't, especially with the record that's already established below. I, other than the time, and I'm not suggesting it's insignificant of having Jeannie be present uh, at a council meeting to introduce the issue. Uh, I, I, well, it it I, is more than that. It includes quite a lot of hours of staff time to do a staff report. I mean, I'm not advocating one way or the other, but I just want to make sure it's clear to the city council what what goes in. And and I think it is a, a good point because, and I can ask the city attorney because she's been here a lot longer. We don't have that many appeals, do we? We don't. No. I think the only the overarching concept to just think about is if we don't recover those costs through a fee, then your general fund is paying it. And so that means if your general fund is paying for it, that means the other property owners in the city are paying for it. And is that something that they should be paying for? Mm -hmm. that's, that's, true think, yeah. that's, that's true of all of this. That's true of all of this. That's, that's, the, that, that's the problem I had about the, I'm sorry, I'm, yeah. I'm out of order. <laughs> but, but, that, that, but that's the problem I had with the whole issue about the total cost, because you know a lot of people will say, well, the reason we've got these items budgeted and you've got a city planner and you've got an inspector is because that's what we're supposed to be providing the services for. I mean, that's, that's what's included. So I, you know, I, 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 I really, I understand the, the, the rationale behind this and obviously we want to have realistic fees that we charge. I just don't want to do anything that, that, that discourages and then also that just raises the, the ire of, of, uh, of the community in, in, in believe me you know we obviously have a you know high standard of living and high income levels and property values in the community and but that shouldn't be the basis upon which we charge it just seems to me that you know that, that uh, you know I don't know how much it costs to file an appeal in court anymore these days but I, I'd hate to think that it's a thousand dollars maybe it is, maybe it's more I don't know I'll let you know in a moment. <laughs> it depends on how many parties. You have your hand up, Curtis? Yeah, well, I also pressed the little thing. You know what? My iPad has died. So oh, um, we're, we're, we're going to go back to the fully the manual method way. Just, now. just on the appeal. I think, I, I don't know that $1,000 seems like it's high, but I think there should be something just to encourage the person, even though we don't have a lot, the person that's just going to appeal just as a, as a nuisance. So I would say... Personally, somewhere between 100 and 500 bucks. But you know, I, I'm throwing that out. Okay. And as far as this whole thing goes, you know, really, it's coming out of our general fund, which we can use for the, all the citizens, which includes the roads and everything else that we're doing. And that's why I'm okay with this because when my neighbor does something, there, I'm paying for it. And when I do something, I don't mind paying for it because I'm getting all these services. So I'm really okay with doing this that's that's how i feel so 775 dollars it, well it's it's well it's not necessarily a party it's it's, <laughs> it's not a, multiple defendants well the plaintiff the plaintiff is filing the appeal or one defendant files the appeal the cost is 775 dollars it has to go to the supreme court 
Uh, <laughs> California, California Court of Appeals. So. Okay, any other questions for staff? Okay, so I had one quick question. What is our roadmap from here? Did you have a calendar set out of how you wanted this to move forward? Well, we were hoping to bring it back at the next meeting. It would be the same night as the um, budget workshop. And based on tonight, we're, you know, we're actually using what revisions we think you will be approving as part of our forecasting. Um, so it would be, uh, I, uh, before we go on, well, yes, yeah, so that would be the schedule. So, so you're looking at bringing it back on May the 1st? Uh, correct. The, it, you can approve the fees. They won't be effective for 60 days. So if we approve it on May 1, it will be effective July 1. Okay. And between now and then, are you looking for input on some of these individual fees that we've talked about? I'm sure you guys all have copious notes of what we've discussed. But we do, and, and I think uh, there's just two I was going to ask about, but just to get some consensus so we'll know where, where we think okay. we should land. Because my, my concern with that timetable then is that people show up on May the 1st and they have this impassioned argument of why a particular fee is unfair and we're really being asked to approve it on that night versus taking the input, thinking about it, coming back on the 15th and saying, okay, we listened to all your feedback and this is our decision and this is what we're going to approve instead of asking us to make a decision that night. And again, I'm assuming we have, um, I mean, if we have a room like this, it's not that big of a deal, but. Chris, uh, city attorney, you, I don't know if this is where you're looking to go, but you can always continue the public hearing. So if you received feedback that night, if you establish a public hearing for May 1st, but you did receive some significant impassioned pleas that made you think, I'm not ready to make a decision tonight, you could continue the public hearing to the next council meeting and say, between now and then, go receive their feedback and incorporate it, and then we'll consider adopting it. But if you receive no impassioned feedback, you could just make the decision right. on May 1st. Right, and then I just, if, if we did get that kind of feedback and we did bring it, uh, and we did continue it to the May 15th meeting, then you say we, we still need 60 days, so that puts right. us on the Ju July 15th. Is that right? So is it just that delays going to really the time. Impact? No, so it's just two weeks. So whatever applications you would receive during those two weeks of July, you'd be under the old fee. But it will send out plenty of announcements through all of our normal communication <coughs> methods, press releases, and stuff like that. Yes, we can absolutely do that. Um, I, the only thing it would slightly alter the revenue projections but if it's only a couple of weeks I, I don't think it's going to be that that different okay so i did hear um there was two 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 uh, two fees i heard some consensus on making a changes from what we had proposed one was the appeal and you know and, and, and for example on the appeal i heard arguments very good on each side but do we want to debate that tonight and give you an answer or do I, we want to go back and think about it maybe talk with people who, you know, in our, in our circle of, of advisors and then come back on May the 1st and say, all right, this is the way I feel about the appeal. Getting in the legal. Can I make one comment regarding sure. that? You can absolutely do that. Um, and uh, city attorney, I'm gonna ask you to chime in one more time here potentially. The benefit to us would be if you're considering a lower amount, but you don't want to make that statement tonight, I think it would be cleaner if we present the higher amount and you ask us to adopt a lower amount than us to come in with a lower amount on May 1st and you ask us to adopt a higher amount because we have noticed this lower amount and then gone up. So I'd rather go a little high and have you say, come lower. Okay. You want the city council? No. <laughs> well, because well, that's perfect. <laughs> okay. And I agree with that. The other thing, too, is it is a public hearing, so you need to hear the testimony from the community before you make your decision. Correct. So tonight, if there's any fee that you have questions about or you want more information, it would be good to let us know. Um, but I think Terry's correct. We would want to include the higher fee. You could always approve a lower fee that night, um, but we wouldn't want to do it the opposite. I would like to, sorry, may I? You may. 
I would like to request that we do not send out, send this out on Thursday afternoon or Friday afternoon before the May 1st meeting, but as quickly as possible. I mean in terms of the public notification? Yeah. Oh, no, it has to go out 10 days in advance. 10 days? Yes. And it's technically it's already out there now because it's, it's in the agenda. Yeah. So well, that, that's why I'm saying we that, should make a press announcement <laughs> oh, saying. Oh, but they won't. But based on the. Oh, I know. The number but yes, of people you will, in the audience, you will I don't publish think two newspaper notices before right. the meeting. Yeah. But I think now that we can say that this has now gone into the public record as of April the yep. 17th, so hopefully within the next couple of days we'll have something up on next door, something through our uh, normal mailing list uh, channel saying that, you know, in two weeks, a little over, right at two weeks, we're going to be discussing this, and now everybody has two weeks notice. That, that this is going to be happening. You, you understand my concern, right? I, I, oh, I no, I do. That, that's why I was saying I want to make will. sure that people oh, have, yeah. I want to make sure people have two shots at this I agree for the most with part. You. Yeah. yeah, and so I'm sure there will be somebody who tonight. will say that. They're that, going to have another shot on, on the first. Yep. On the and then assuming we don't have a, you know, a lot of, um, a lot of impassioned and emotional arguments, we, can, we, we might go to the 15th. Okay. So uh, there was I, one other fee, Terry. Yeah, uh, there was the appeal in the solar. And I also noticed the, the final map. Uh, right. So unless we hear differently from you, we'll come back with a $3,000 final map fee. But if that one is giving you heartburn of moving from zero to 3,000, uh, the council member expressed mm -hmm. a little concern about that one. And then solar. And the solar. Okay. On the final map issue, um, we currently have two applications pending, um, but other than those two, I can only think of one other one that we've had in the last maybe 10 years. We really don't have that many. So. Yeah, I th think we had one back in 2010. That's the last one I think I remember. But that yeah, may have been. Right. Yeah. yeah, all our residents are very logical. So they look at this and they go, right, you right. only and have two, right. why even bother? They will see it, but, <laughs> right? but it does involve um, out, because we do have a, a contract engineer and it is very engineer intensive, so it is a expensive. Okay. <laughs> All right, I think we got everything we need tonight. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to close this item. Thank you very much, Terry, for showing you up and your Good great presentation. presentation. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thank you. Okay, so let's move on to our next item, which is the committee and commissioner reports. I start at left. Let's start with right. Um, start with me? I'm starting with you. Oh, okay. So uh, the West Valley Sanitation District, we're having the same, the same fee. We're going to have two meetings, right? So we issued 35,000 postcards, and we got 12 people complaining. So just... So, so you know, so our second hearing is going to be on May 9th at Campbell City Hall. Okay. We wanted to make it bigger. And then the other one is the South Flow. We're ending, we're, we have two more meetings, and we're going to, we actually prioritized how we're going to try to have the FAA change the rules about flying so that the airplanes aren't very noisy. But I got to tell you, it. The decision is based on the FAA. So if they decide, yes, we're going to do it, we're going to do it. If they say no, then that's it. Bless you. Okay. Council Member Walsheimer. Thank you. I attended the uh, Santa Clara Valley Water Commission last week. Um, a couple of points uh, that I think are very interesting. Their staff has proposed a uh, <clears throat> excuse me, 9.7% increase for the next fiscal year, which starts... July 1st, 9.7% uh, fiscal 2019 through 2026, 9.7% each Every year. year. And that's How the wholesale uh, water price. You're talking about if you add, and then again and then again and again. If and you add just... on top of that, the San Jose Water Company, let's conservatively uh, estimate that at 10% per year also, which would be below what they've done so far. That would be 20% per year, which would mean you would pay double four years from now and double again four years from then. 
Wow. So you would, eight years from now, you would pay 4X for your water. So their, their justification is very flawed, I think. Their justification is based on capacity needs. The presentation before that, somebody showed that the water demand in Santa Clara Valley has been flat since 20, since for the last 10 years. So why do they need 9.7% 9, 9 to expand their capacity? I don't know. Hmm. Something is very wrong here. Um, yeah, the, a lot of people are very upset about that whole presentation, and I think they have to go to the PUC with it, and hopefully somebody will, will stop it. But if, somebody, if, if this is not stopped, you will pay 4x for your water eight years from now. The other uh, interesting point was the uh, Anderson Dam problem. Uh, as you know, they're, they're, they're doing a seismic uh, retrofit on the Anderson Dam, and they, um, they drained 50% of the water. And then they came to the conclusion that the whole dam has to be rebuilt, not, half, not the top half, but the whole dam. So they have to drain the whole reservoir, rebuild the whole dam, and the price is now up to uh, $550 million for the project. Mm -hmm. And then they also discovered that the spillway has the same problem that the Orville spillway had. So they have to build a new spillway also. So they have some major uh, projects coming up. <laughs> so they're saying that the board is looking for input with regards to the water price. So I think we should invite somebody from the Santa Clara Valley Water District here to justify 9.7% per year for the next eight years. Hmm. Okay. Thank you. Council Member Brian Standing? Nothing. All right. Nothing. And I'm going to go really quick myself. I'm going to kind of tag on Council Member Turner's FAA Southern Route and say that we talked a little bit about forming some type of union <laughs> with Santa Cruz for the approaches into San Francisco. One of the ideas was to create a JPA, and that idea did not go over very well. So we're going to continue looking at ways to um, get together with not only with Santa Cruz, and I'm talking about Santa Clara, not only getting together with Santa Cruz, but we've also been invited to participate with San Mateo, and uh, we're going to see what happens there. And I, I asked an interesting question because we kept talking about how the FAA has the final say. And I said, so basically what you're telling me is that there's, there's no opportunity to ever go back to a way it was before they came out with this next gen. And I come to find out that that's not true. The city of Scottsdale sued the FAA, and basically the courts mandated and ordered that the FAA go back to the previous flight plans that they had. And that caused a lot less. So I'm, I'm not going to say that all hope is lost, and but they definitely want to try to work it out through the through the different committees and commissions and and blue ribbon panels and all of the other other um, communication vehicles that are going on right now. And they also commented that the FAA thinks that the Bay Area has been a a model for how these type of discussions should occur, especially since they haven't had to do anything yet after. I think I've watched three years of this now go on. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it. There is going to be a Cities Association general meeting on May the 10th. It's going to be held at Main Street in Cupertino, and we will be hosting a table, and all council members are invited if you would like to go see what's going on. The topic will be, guess what, transportation and housing. Wow. And uh, that's it. So we'll turn it over to the city manager. I'm sorry, council member comments? I have one. I'm, I'm flying blind here. Oh, I have one. Council member comments? One quick comment. We have a quick comment. Very quick comment. If we do decide to give them money, I say we, we get money sooner night for Aaron Neville. I was going to say Aaron Neville. Oh, that would be awesome because <laughs> we have great seats and everything. Okay. <laughs> so um, just kind of along that that vein any other council member comments i'm just throwing it open here i was when i when i was thinking about monte sereno night especially since we've had a hard time getting residents there it, it kind of be more interesting to maybe just have a a little sign or 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 some type of a little table for every single night of of the uh of the uh 
concert series. You know, like how they have all the different posters of all the people who sponsored. Instead of having it all thrown in on one night, maybe we just kind of do something spread out across the entire um, concert series. So just something to Get think about. Get people to show up. No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, it, it, we wouldn't even have seats for that year. We oh. would just we would just have like a, a table or a or a, a tent. Okay. That's how we started with a tent. The tent was really good, <laughs> and, and we've never had a tent again. Was it so. burned in like six years ago? Yeah. All right. So city manager's report. The only thing is related to water rates. I sent uh, out a, a council correspondence just to remind everyone that on Saturday, this Saturday, the League of Women Voters for our section of the metropolitan area is hosting a event entitled Rising Water Rates, Paying for What? Question mark. So if you will look back at the email that I sent you guys uh, April 13th, there's a PDF of the invitation, so it could be useful to go. Hear what they have to say. Thank you. That's all I have. Okay. Thank you. At that, um, so just one last uh, item I wanted to bring up. I understand that next week is the community meeting being yes. held, and I understand that um, our esteemed city attorney and city manager will be attending. And, um, and the city planner. And the city planner. And I think we've been asked not to attend, correct? In general, yes. <laughs> Staff and city attorneys, and I've been through this before many times, <laughs> advise city council members not to attend. And part of the issue is related to a quorum. Mm -hmm. But it's also partly, you know, your, your position is to receive the input, ultimately, staff report, presentation from the applicant, persons from the public at the public hearing and, and then deliberate and make your decision. So in general, um, attending these type of community meetings where an applicant's presenting a project that they're working on is what we would recommend you not participate. Okay. We, we will be putting together a summary of comments, um, a summary of comments so that we can provide you with, you know, the important points that we did receive uh, feedback on. And we can, after the meeting, give you an update on how it went and yes. attendance, things like that. And this is for the April 23rd? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. I, I understand, I think, the reasoning behind it, but I think some people interpret is this negatively. To, why are we hiding? Mm -hmm. and, and we will have an opportunity to speak, so we can make a, include that in our presentation. That The purpose of tonight is for the applicant to explain the project to the public, yeah. to receive feedback from the public, not okay. to include them. And this is, this is a format and a <clears> method <throat> of presenting an application by the applicant that I am very familiar with and has gone on in actually all three of the communities I've worked with before. And in all those communities, their city attorney advises the decision makers, please do not come. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much.